This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Welcome to the Awesome Cast. For those of you that are wondering what's going on, you have a Sorg this week, but not the Sorg. That's because uh, we'd like to talk to the ladies this week. So we've got Katie Dutter. Hello, friends. She's the usual face. Yeah. And uh, we've got Cynthia Klosky joining us as well. Well, hi. Hi. And of course, this is the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky and talk tech, social media, and more with the local nerds that use it live right here from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So you know what? I think that we have some awesome things of the week. I'm just jumping right in. Do it. Don't look at me like that, Sorg. This is my show, not yours. Just she for today. does what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still running tech over there for us. Um, no. Uh, do you want me to kick it off? Yeah. Sweet. Do you, do you finally have your awesome thing of the week? Yes, I told you. Okay. Um, my awesome thing of the week is... Um, President Obama finally checked out VR and cardboard with googly eyes. I mean, the picture is, is the awesome thing more than the actual article. Um, apparently, um, uh, the way this article sounds, it's like he has never tested VR before. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you look at the picture, I really enjoy how he's holding his hand out in front of it. Like, oh, I can see my hand. I'm like, that's not how that works. Yeah, that's, that's not, really <laughs> that's not how works. any of this works. But he did try the virtual reality. And they I don't know who gave him the cardboard, but there are definitely googly eyes on there. And I want to put googly eyes on everyone's cardboard now. And um, he mu- he mentioned that this was a brave new world, this VR world that we're creating for ourselves. And um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting that I don't understand why it's like a big deal because it really makes it sound like he has never done this before. And I would hope if he would try this before. Oh, he previously admitted to having a virtual golfing range in the White House, but that's it. But the the virtual golfing range in the White House would that have like a virtual headset or would how how would that be set up like? I, I'm picturing something Star Trek. I'm picturing something like at the bars, like where you just have like a screen and like brrr, and you just make the swinging motion. Like I don't picture it as high techy, like an Oculus or an HTC. It's more of like a you know, it's, something it's like a, a bar little, setup, little, <laughs> a little setup that projects. Interesting. So, Cindy, have you had a chance to try out any of this VR stuff? I haven't. Uh, I, I I keep thinking that it should be simpler than it is to to get a hold of it, but I, I think I must hang with the wrong circles, like or I don't see enough people in real life to have a virtual life. I don't I don't know. Somehow there's a there's a paradox there. I think um, I think <clears throat> one of the problems with VR right now is the way they kind of portray it as being uh, not somebody something that everybody can get a hold of. Uh, for example, like the cardboard you can order through Google. I think it's like ten or twelve bucks. It's really right. inexpensive. And even just for playing around and looking in the virtual world, um, uh, Sorg and I actually went to a meetup last week where we talked with a group of people who were just, you know, designing VR, designing in this whole world and who are just fanatics for it. And it was such a cool eye opening experience to see like all the different uses for it. And, you know, it was like, oh, you could just, you know, explore under the ocean or you could shoot and be a space pirate. So it was like a lot of like these really sound like really addicting games. And some of them sound like quite the workout, too, which I was like, oh, I want to check these out. <laughs> Well, the, so I, I think so. Those things sound appealing, and and at the same time, apparently, there's nothing that's that's like, oh, that's the killer app, you know, like that's mm-hmm. the reason why I need this. Mm-hmm. Um, al- although I, um, I mean, I can imagine that there would be one. It's just that nothing has wandered past my, you know, my eyeballs to say, oh my god, that's something I have to try. Even if it's ten or twelve bucks, it's still, you know, still have to order it and wait for it, and yeah. then it's there. Exactly. And like, like you said, it was like, there's nothing there. There were so many games that they mentioned that I have not even heard of that. It was like, Oh, wait a minute. What I, I've like, so tunnel vision to not even see this world. Like, I think I understand it and I think I have a hand in it. And then I go, wait a minute. No, I don't. I don't have a slight grasp on this whole entire world and universe of the, you know, this VR universe. So yeah, there's nothing yet. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I need this right now. Change my life. Mm-hmm. Well, even so like, I think it's more along the lines that obviously VR is a new tech and people are still trying to get their feet wet with it. Um, you know, like I kind of envision where things were when video games first started and now mm-hmm. the way that things have developed and changed that, you know, they're, they're using 
you know, simulators to help train people in, you know, armed forces and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, so if, if they can do that sort of thing with, with VR, you know, can you imagine doing VR surgery as a, as a surgical student mm-hmm. type of thing? I think that that would be kind of an interesting movement for it. There, there's this, there's this thing though, that it's kind of like what you were saying. There's a lot of potential, mm-hmm. but like, what am I going to be able to use like right now? And mm-hmm. and I realize like, this is a podcast, like most of the people, most of the things that we talk about here, we, we tend to be on that cutting edge or bleeding edge when we talk. But at the same time, sometimes in your day, you know, I've, I'm on the bleeding edge on this technology. Mm-hmm. I can't be that on every technology. Oh my gosh. You no, know? you lose your mind. That's, it's one of those <laughs> things. It's like, Oh, I have to know this. I have to do this. And you could just easily bury yourself. And then you don't want to do anything. You're like, nope, done. Like just, just like the total burnout of not wanting to look oh, at yeah. anything. Where I think it would be interesting, and I think there was something in the notes. I don't know if there's an uh, article we want to talk about later, but or now. Um, but to experience things as someone else is, a, would, is really experiencing would be interesting, you know. So to like for me, you know, designing you know user experiences um, for marketing or communications purposes to to be able to see what it's like. You know, like you, you hear about people wearing a suit that lets you feel like, what is it like to have arthritis, mm-hmm. you know, like, or, or, um, to, to just be smaller or taller or whatever, so that it, it, it causes you to feel how different the world is as you get older. So if, if there's like a, a, a VR thing that helps me understand what's it like to be, um, uh, colorblind or to have some sort of vision impairment or to have an audio impairment, auditory impairment, I guess mm-hmm. is the word I want. Those things, you know. They wouldn't be fun. They wouldn't be recreational, but they would be. They would have a great value. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things a lot with the VR is is the empathy kind of uh, ed, um, some sign of things. And um, I saw an article about um, it was if you want to become a vegetarian? Watch this video. <laughs> this is why people are vegetarians. Um, the the article. I'll just jump into the article. Essentially, um, at the Tribeca Film Festival, they had a section where it was all pretty much VR. And one of the couple of the films included somebody who had lost his sight and what it was like to be blind and having to use your other senses. And then another one was what it was like to be in a cell in solitary confinement. And we think, I mean, there are things beyond our, beyond us that we'll ever, hopefully never have to experience, and, you know, it's like the solitary confinement. But um, there are things that we need to experience as human beings to increase empathy. Like, for example, one of the things I always say is I think everybody should either work in food or as in retail mm-hmm. because that just develops you as a better person because you understand the struggle going be- above and beyond, like, <clears throat> things that are beyond your control. And I think I, I like the idea of, of virtual reality kind of giving more people empathy. Like, oh, my gosh, this is – I'd never imagined that this would be this hard or this – extreme for you yeah yeah yeah. to live your to live a day you know to walk a mile in someone else's shoes or to live a day in someone else's experience so you're making choices uh you know it's a you know choose your own adventure but one where it's like not a, a, someone else's just simple life that, that seems like it would have a lot of value kind of a way to help you like check your privilege you know mm-hmm. really understand oh, gosh, where yeah. your advantages lie and you might be overseeing you know overlooking them well sorg help me out on this one uh I can't remember if it was on the show or if it was in a discussion with Chris Whitlatch about the video that they did with following the the girl through the village on her way to get water. Uh, That was with uh, Charity Water. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it was uh, super effective for them to uh, 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 get uh, donors. And he said, I think he was saying that they... um, they got more donors than you know donations than, than they typically do uh, from an event where they were showing this off. Yeah, because it was it was more like you guys said it was the empathy angle that people were actually able to, you know, experience from that perspective uh, what it's actually like, and it it just adds a completely different aspect to everything. Well, then pretty good for a, a president or any other leader of the of a country to. Um, have a start getting their feet wet in that then probably. oh absolutely and i like the googly eyes so he's still kind of watching what's what's going on around him <laughs> i still see you <laughs> my one googly eye and there were two googly eyes <laughs> <laughs> one was one you know they're all the <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well thanks thanks for uh that little uh, walk there katie um cindy you have you have something kind of new. I have new to you. Of the week. Now it is not um, an electronic device. But oh, it is okay. A, but I but I feel like geeks you drink a lot of caffeine, mm-hmm. if I'm not wrong. And so this is um, a technological marvel that makes uh, the consumption of caffeine 
faster. So it's the, it, um, I have it here and there's a link in the show um, information too. The Ingenuity, you can use it for tea or coffee, I'm told. Um, anyway, this is my mom's and I liked it so much that I have ordered my own and it's arriving today and I'm not in Pittsburgh to enjoy it, but I have this one here to show you. Anyway, so you put the tea and the coffee in and then you let it sit and then you put it on the cup and the tea comes through. Oh, oh nice. Me, that is an optimal um, caffeine um, creation device. And I think it is indeed ingen in ingen ingenious. So I encourage everyone. Wonderful. Awful. So it, it looks kind of like a French press that you can actually drain the stuff out of. But it's, yeah, but it's a, um, I mean, you can see there's like a, maybe you can't see, there's a filter thing here. Oh, okay. And so magically, like you put the water in and nothing comes out, nothing comes out until you put the cup underneath and then it comes out. Oh, how cool. That's the engineering magic. Nice. And then it's pretty easy to clean too because you unscrew this thing and you dump it out as opposed to, you know, with the French press scraping it out with your hand and whatnot. Yeah. That's so a great way for loose leaf tea. Minding here of the French press cleaning process, which I think almost everyone is, is familiar with if you use a French press. <laughs> Definitely. That that way looks way easier and way more technologically advanced. We'll we'll go there. Future. And then you can have more drink more tea and then create more geeky things and you know the world will clearly be a, a better but more frazzled place. Mm -hmm. zoom, zoom, zoom. I like it as Katie drinks her coffee. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I know that we've talked about all sorts of different tech apps and, and technology for, you know, tracking and doing things. And uh, for me, I, I have my Fitbit. And primarily the reason that I have my Fitbit is I've not upgraded to a an official watch item because I don't know what I want as far as a watch is concerned. And in order for me to spend like two to $300 for a smart watch, I want it to have all of the features or at least most of the features that I want with it in order to, to make that happen. Um, the Apple watch, I, everybody loves the idea of the Apple watch because it's tech literally on your wrist and it's all sorts of fun. Um, but my biggest setback with that was I wanted to have it, do more with my activity tracking and, and whatnot. So I was really happy to hear that Apple watch is getting a serious heart monitoring, um, with the new cardio wrist strap. And essentially what this is, is that they're saying that it's, you know, technologically advanced version of a, a monitor that automatically tracks and sets with everything without having to have all of the, the fun stuff, the, the peripherals with it. Uh, the other fun thing about it is that it's like legit. It, it's almost an FDA approved ECG accessory and, and it's putting all of the rest of the, the heart monitoring devices to shame practically with, with how accurate and the medical grade is, is literally like all throughout this article that we're reading. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of interested in what that sort of aspect would bring to things. And what it's going to do with the competition, because obviously if, if other app designers and, and other developers are looking at different things, you know, people are, are going to be shelling out some money for this more impressive object. How's it going to do for, for competition? I think it's going to stir the pot quite literally uh, to, to make it just something that that's going to be super exciting. And I, I'm, I'm really excited about the aspect of it and it's bumped the Apple Watch a little bit higher on my comparison list. Most definitely. I, I like that it's, you don't have to have everything built into the device. Yeah. Like these new accessories are just fantastic where, you know, it's like, oh, you don't have to, because there's always a need. Oh, I need to upgrade. I need to, you know, get the newest model because mm -hmm. I want this. I need the newest model for this. And now you could, I, I always like the, the play and the additional things like that. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. And, and that's, that's just it. Like, um, I'm, a few versions back with the Fitbit, I, I'm on the flex. So it's just my little tracker that I put into my wristband and it lights up with the lights, but it's nice to be able to, Hey, this is kind of cool. This is a strap. I can put this strap on or, you know, Oh no, the strap broke. I don't have to get a whole new, you know, Apple watch. I just need to get a new strap. So I, I think that that's kind of a cool way to do it. And yes, I did. Yeah. Totally strap on. I'm I'm new to my, my I'm still in, I'm still in, in the honeymoon phase of my Apple Watch, um, and so uh, part of what I have liked about it because I am in that I am you know a 
type A, like check things off. How am I doing? What's my grade for the day type person? Um, I enjoy the performance piece, you know, where it tells me, have I moved enough today? Have I walked all my steps and stood every hour and all those things? I feel, I feel quite like I've achieved so much just from standing mm-hmm. up every now and again. But one of the things that's kind of um, less great about it, because it isn't using heart rate in the same way, is that like when I drove from Pittsburgh to Butler, you know, I drove for an hour, I'm sitting still in the car for that hour. Um, and so that I should have like no, no, any like increase to much, much of anything. And yet the uh, watch is convinced that I was up and walking for that entire time because of the car moving, which oh. tells you maybe about the car I was driving. Oh. But still, the point is, <laughs> it really, there's only so much that it's going to do for you. And, and so in real life, does that matter to me? Not, not so much. I mean, the, it, the, these things are really guides. But if you really do care, if you are trying to make some, um, you know, if you are trying to, to do something or you have some some medical reason why you need to um, have monitoring, this kind of a uh, higher grade um, tool that you can just add it on, that is pretty amazing. And then people who don't need it don't have to add it on. So we aren't all pushed up to that higher price point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the customization, I think, is is key for a lot of different things. Um, you know, it's more than just, oh, I want a blue band. Like you said, it's, it's, I'd like to have this do this. Well, I don't need that to do that. And it it makes it a huge part of the market aspect of it. Well, and you have to figure, I mean, for something to be um, FDA approved, I mean, that, just the cost of going through that process is so high. That's that's part of the time that's involved and it's part of what's, so I wouldn't be surprised to know that that band doubles the cost of the thing. Oh, absolutely. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised about that. Um, Which is kind of cool because I, you know, kind of going back to the versatility on things, I, I can almost see, you know, going into my doctor and saying, you know, hey, you, you need to be more active. You you need to get, you know, something to monitor this, talk to, you know, so-and-so. Is this going to be something that's going to be a medical device qualification for it? Or is it just going to stay with the fun, cool, techie type of thing? Ooh, like the insurance coverage. Would you get more insurance yeah, coverage? That's, that's because, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's a fun little question that, that was in the back of my head as I was checking this out. And then can I watch somebody else's thing if I'm monitoring them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. Yes, I, I think that it's kind of interesting. Uh, I During Startup Weekend back uh, in October when I participated, uh, they were talking about one of the there, – there was a company that was doing medical integration. And essentially, they have an app that was developed. They give you a Fitbit-like device. And they can actually pull up your information and see if your doctor tells you that you should be walking for 30 minutes a day, they can track and see if you're actually walking for 30 minutes a day. Um, There was one that had diabetic integration so that like if you had glucose issues, like it it would test something within your skin to to test what your diabetes level was. Um, So, yeah, it's it's interesting to see how everything has, has evolved and changed with regard to just something as simple as a wristwatch. Right. But they are being cautious here about saying how much it's going to cost. And I'm curious whether that's like a market decision or there's still more development happening on it. Or I imagine they're testing out different price points as, as far as researching it. Too. Yeah, I would, I would hope so at least. Mm-hmm. Well, very cool. Very cool. Uh, I think that it's a really good time to, to go ahead and uh, give a shout out to our, our Patreons. Um, you know, talking about some of the different things that, that we do um, kind of plays into the fact that we're here talking to you folks because people are interested. We have people in the chat room each week. We have people that actually have supported us on Patreon. Uh, we've got Thistle Seed Business Development and the Michael Fedor Show. Um, so, you know, fans, just like everybody else that, that listens to the show and, and loves the contribution and loves what we're doing and decided that they were going to support us on, on Patreon. So, uh, of course, if you'd like to become a Patreon, uh, go ahead and visit our website and you can, you can check out uh, the house, t- the how to on that aspect of things. But otherwise, uh, you can also hit us up just, just, just to chat. Um, we'll be getting into some fan submissions here in a little bit. Uh, so there's different ways to contact us via email and Twitter and Facebook and Google plus. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, this is a good break. What's that? Pizza. We do have pizza, but mm-hmm. you do not have a pizza desk this week. I do not have a pizza desk. This is this is another sorg problem. This is very disconcerting. Yeah. Although the sorg problems that we were having earlier, you would have thrown your pizza desk. Yeah, I know. That's what I needed. I needed something to throw. 
Uh, yeah, we have to thank our friends at Slice on Broadway for the beautiful pizza. Oh, look how Sorg is doing a great job. What happened to half the pizza? <laughs> Uh, the pizza already disappeared. Pizza gets eaten in the studio. Have you not noticed this? Yes. <laughs> but we have to thank Slice on Broadway for um, giving us this pizza every week. And please go visit them and enjoy some of their delicious pizza. Oh, absolutely. And I, personally, I mean, their their pepperoni and cheese that they give us each week is phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. but uh, And it's also been New York approved by, by the likes of Mad Mike. But... Um, they have specialty pies as well. Essentially, you can take any of their subs, their hoagies, and ask them to make it into pizza form, and they'll do it. Uh, the gonzo is amazing. So if you go ask for the gonzo, you'll love it. Uh, their buffalo chicken is also really, really good. Um, so yeah, check them out. Slice on Broadway. Tell them we sent you. They'll love that. I have an app of the week. You do. Yep, I do. Um, it's called We Do. <laughs> hey, we do. Hey, we, we do. We have an app of the week. <laughs> and, you know, we, we all have about five million different task lists on our phone and five different, million different task apps on our phone. Uh, this new one's called We Do, and it just came out a couple days ago. It's in the uh, the um, Apple store. Um, not quite on Android yet, but it what it does is it's not only just a to-do list, it's a social to-do list, so you can share it with it, what they call your tribes. So if, for example, if you have roommates and you want to put them on the list, like, hey, so-and-so, can you go buy, you know, can you pick up some bread or something for the house? Or did you pay the utilities? Uh, you can have conversations <laughs> with them and you can label each of your tribes. Um, maybe you just have a conversation with uh, your family and you're planning an event. Or if you have business, um, we all use Slack, obviously. But <laughs> uh, you could do business stuff through this, too, where you can assign to-do lists and then chat about these to-do lists. Uh, I like the interface. It's very, very clean. It's it's pretty much a, a white screen with some little pictures and text and a little bit of blue, and that's it. Um, a lot of these things get a little junked up after a while, I think, on the um, the to-do to list, which makes me want to avoid them because they're just overwhelming to look at. But uh, I really like how the, this one looks, and it's free right now in the App Store. Nice. Mm -hmm. The iTunes store. Sorry. Have you looked at um, very Trello? Because that's a, yes. an app yeah. as well. Um, and so a little, not exactly social in the same way, but it I use it like individually for tasks because it makes it easy to rearrange things and, and put notes on them. But you can also have like a little group. Um, but the interface of it is uh, not as, as simple and elegant as this one seems to be. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious whether you ever played with it. Yeah, I actually have a couple of different Trello projects going. Um, I use Trello for Sorg stuff. I also use Trello for Bold. So I have two different aspects of that. And I can I, I like Trello because I can do color combination and color coordination. So when I look at things, the purple stuff is all Sorg. Uh, the pink stuff for me is all Bold. And I like that it has reminders and different things that I can set it to remind me when my deadline is due for, for my bold article, for instance, and it'll send me text and, and email notifications for that. So I like it. I use Trello when I, for scare house things like events, um, that I'll put the event at the top and then the things I have to do underneath for each event. Mm -hmm. Cause I might think of something and go, Oh shoot, we want to do this for this one coming up or we want to do this for this. So I, it's a nice way for me to kind of everything visually laid out and then I can remember things and maybe, Oh, look, I, for this event, we tried this. Maybe this time I'll try this. That's what I use it for mainly. It's just, <laughs> it's personal. There's no, it's any social in that end. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, one of the other fun things about the show is that uh, we, we take fan contributions um, either through email or a lot of it is, is actually via Twitter, uh, also from the chat room during the during the show's live. And this week we have a submission from uh, Doug Durda at Douglas Durda on, on Twitter. He's been following the, the sling stuff and he was super excited to let us know that uh, more channels have been announced for sling, including... Comedy Central, BET, Spike, MTV, Nick Jr., and many others. I think, honestly, he's more excited about the Nick Jr. because he has <laughs> kids, and it's safe for his kids to watch this sort of stuff on Sling. Um, so, are, have you dealt a lot with, with Sling? Because I, I, myself, I haven't had a whole lot of interaction no, with it. it, it, it it's it's um, um, more for if, if you want to have a TV channel on, right? And, and considering how our schedules are, I haven't really considered it too, too much. and haven't even gotten into a trial. But I'm keeping an eye on stuff like this. 
Okay, so it, it's not like Hulu or Netflix that you can no, watch no, no. And stuff the, later. The basic idea of Sling is um, you buy a package, it loads up an app on, on your Apple TV, Roku, whatever, and it's it's basically you get this instead of cable. So it is like you can get – this is a way for you to get ESPN if you're technically a cord cutter, um, and it's just an alternative to cable for the stations. There are some limited – not DVRs, but um, um, like kind of on-demand, but – it's it's really wonky in the fact like that was actually just listening to core colors where they were talking about um, they're watching a channel uh, Fox Sports and they blacked out their their um, uh, hockey game which if they had legit cable they wouldn't have been blacked out so he had to go through a process in order to prove that he was actually lived where he lived since it was since you could log in from anywhere and other things where sometimes certain programs if you could just be watching fox and maybe they decide the simpsons is, is something that sling's not going to carry and it's just going to black out for the half an hour on on that channel so there's these weird little things with this since it's kind of a different take on, sh- on on cable a little bit um but and even you know seeing seeing these guys um hop on and, and adding channels all the time and make it a little more interesting and hopefully they work out all the kinks nice Cynthia, do you have um, cable? Or are you a cord cutter? I so so for my apartment. When you know, they, you know there's a world of deals with um, the big C when mm-hmm. you um, are signing on. And I really only needed internet. And my decision was I was only going to have internet. And mm-hmm. they said, well, it will cost less for the first year if you also have HBO. Mm-hmm. I said, well, that's weird. But okay. <laughs> I trust that I will be able to not be hooked by the HBO and cancel it uh, once the year is up. And so I'm still in that that year. And, and I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I watched like True Detective, I think, um, and a few other things. And every now and again, I'll watch a movie. But most of the time, I'm just um, sort of Netflix and Amazon and um, a world of YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you, you've essentially cut the cord with the uh, HBO additive over there. Yeah, I mean, and it is nice to have, you know, so you think, I don't know, is there any like real difference as I'm sort of streaming um, Comedy Central over something versus watching the, the because that is available, apparently available along with the HBO and like, you know, PBS, um, <laughs> maybe one or two other things. Um, I don't really notice any difference. So I think that, you know, I'm not, I'm not the most demanding of customers right now. I, know, I guess we'll see as time goes on. Okay, and Katie, I, I, know, I know that this is technologi- technologically above your uh, friend's VHS. Yes, my VHS. No, my- <laughs> I watch Friends on Netflix. The only thing I have on VHS are my Star Wars and wrestling tapes that Sword gave me. So, <laughs> now I'm still rocking my Netflix. Um, my mom's borrowed Xfinity password <laughs> to watch Raw and um, the WWE Network. Yeah, beyond that, I'm not. <laughs> That's nice. all I watch. And then, of course, YouTube videos. Like, today I got pulled into the one where they had the Velociraptor as a pet. Wow. Mm. was hilarious. He's like a cat. He, the Velociraptor. The guy's looking at this bowl of cereal, and he's like, the Velociraptor's like, boop, boop. And he's like, don't you do it. And the guy's like, his owner's like, don't you do it. And he's like, boop, boop. And he's like, stop it. And he goes, boop. And he throws the bowl on the floor like a cat. I was dying. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my YouTube for the day. Nice. It's amazing how addictive YouTube is, like mm-hmm. more than anything, because you think, oh, just one more. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this one's very short. I'm just going to watch this one and then I'll go to bed. Next thing you know, it's 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's I, th- I think the key word right there is short, because you're not looking at it saying, oh, I, I don't have half an hour to watch this mm-hmm. or I don't have an hour to actually put in to watch a full episode of something. Yeah, it's just two minutes. This one's just three minutes. Yeah. This one is less than a minute. Oh, he, Sorg's pulling up the, the video. <laughs> it's hilarious. He's just like, boop. Don't do it. Don't do it. Boop. <laughs> just search Pet Velociraptor um, um, YouTube Breakfast and you'll find it. Yeah, this actually started with the T-Rex Tuesday. I don't know if you've ever looked at T-Rex Tuesday. They're on Facebook. And it's essentially a couple people who have the big T-Rex costumes and they do things like ice skate and roller derby. And today yes. they were in an elevator. So <laughs> this is what happens. Thank you, YouTube. YouTube providing hours and hours of entertainment. Dinosaur entertainment. Yes. Dinosaur entertainment. Yes. It's, it's a channel <laughs> completely for Rachel Sager. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and all of us. All, well, of, all us of us, of course. Yes, yes, yes. 
Now, I found an article this week, I think, Katie, that um, that, that you're going to have some fun with. Uh, Yik Yak is adding a chat function. Ooh. Now, for those of us that aren't, aren't familiar with Yik Yak, we, we've done some videos with Yik Yak, and essentially it's, it's, you know, this interesting aspect of posting things anonymously and just by geographic region you, you can you can pull them up and you can look at them so the fact that they're adding a chat function is is more interesting because instead of just posting responses you can actually chat with with the people it, it, they were running I, I remember when i was still looking at yik yak they ran into you would see people like posting back and forth and they'd like hit me up on kick so everybody was leaving their app to go somewhere else and have conversations. So it really makes sense that they find, I mean, this is, seems like it should have been much earlier. Yeah. Uh, the article actually indicates that it's, you know, toward building a real community instead of mm -hmm. having to have the people go to a different platform. Um, but they're saying that it's a double-edged sword because anonymous chats typically lead to abuse mm -hmm. and the company is requiring that uh, both users opt into the chat. So, you can invite someone to the message, but you can't actually send them a message until they acknowledge it. So it's kind of like with Facebook, you can't actually send somebody a message unless you're friends. Uh, you can make the friend request, send the, the message that way, but otherwise you, you can't direct message them without being friends with them. Which I think is kind of safe in, in the unknown internets of, of Yik Yak. I mean, Yikak has done a good job of evolving in regards to safety. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to say it's the safest place. Obviously, anything with an anonymous chat is kind of a dangerous location. But they um, it used to be you could just post anything and reply to anything and not, I mean, there was literally nothing. Like, the only thing that I took was, like, the fact that I was on this particular phone, like, my probably my IP address or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, now you have to, if you want to respond, you have to put in your email address or your phone number. So, I mean, not that that's... You can't just create, but it's at least it's another step. Well, and the other nice thing that they're they're talking about is um, if you're repeatedly reported or flagged, your user account will be suspended. So, I mean, they're they're setting out some safety features. You know, realizing that it's an anonymous platform, that they're setting for some decent steps to try to police it a little bit. I I think. I think with Yik Yak, I, I mean, I'm not sure how popular... I mean, I know they're not as popular as they used to be. No, which it, is why they're trying to... They're very much reactive instead of proactive, which is yeah. kind of a dangerous terrain to be in, and, and especially in, like, platforms like this, I think. It's like, oh, you have to think of these things in advance. Even in social media, we're told, you know, always have that emergency plan in the back of your head. What if something happens? So, like, they just don't seem like they've had much forethought into this app. It was like, look at this cool app. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute, we need to do this now. We need to do this now. Like, the chat feature should have been there long ago. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Um, Cindy, have, have you had any experience with the ECAC? No. And um, now I'm feeling uh, really ancient. Oh, no. Don't. Oh, believe me. There's so many things that people are like, oh, yeah, I'm on this. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty interesting, um, oh, but the whole idea of how does, you know, how does a community, like, does the community police itself? Does the mm -hmm. app want to take responsibility for, you know, policing them? All of those things is, are so complex. Sometimes, I mean, either way you run into trouble because if the app is taking responsibility for it, if the, um, then when things go wrong, they're feet are going to get held to the fire, which has its pluses and negatives, but if the community can do it, then they, maybe they can do it better because there's more of them by, by you know, necessarily. But we have, we've seen like that go different ways with like a site like Slashdot, where you kind of gain power by being on it more power, like you become a moderator and so on. Um, then there's like a very clear system and it's evolved over, they've evolved it over time so that you understand exactly how it's going to work. And the people who most care about it um, and most care about it being a good place then have an incentive and means to like do more. And then you compare that with like a Wikipedia where the same kind of thing has been intended to happen. And yet somehow there are also these like cycles of, of trouble where people gain enough power and it seems like it goes to their head or mm -hmm. like, like clicks of power form. And so in both of those cases, you have the ability to be sort of anonymous or to be going under a pseudonym. And so it's, there's a lot of overlap to this. And, and so I'm wondering whether over time, you know, the 
company, if Yikyak will want to like use the power of the community to monitor the community, or if they'll feel like they'd better they'd be better off holding on to it themselves. So so this idea of you can be flagged a couple times is why I'm thinking about it. So there's like they're like trying to walk this middle ground, it sounds like. Yes, I, I, I agree I'm with sorry, you. I just lumped a whole bunch of, like, I feel like I'm mansplaining that entire thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're, you're good. Um, no, it, it's some valid stuff. I mean, like, like you said, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword with things. And if, if it, from one aspect of it, yeah, it could be a good thing if it's, you know, policed by, by the mass community, but then the mass community can run amok with it. And, and yeah, it, it could be, it could be very problematic. But, uh, if people, you know, who do know themselves, know each other offline or they form friendships online and then they bond together to do a thing. And, yeah. And so it depends mm-hmm. a little bit on how that structure is all set up. And, yeah. And there's strength to it, but there's also, like you said, double edged it, it can go either way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's fascinating to watch, though, as long as I'm not in it. <laughs> yeah. So just yeah. sit back with the popcorn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you're good to go, but not, not ground zero now. Um, yeah. So... Lot, lots of interesting things happening over here. Um, speaking of interesting things that, that could go either way, <laughs> um, first response, the popular pregnancy test, now has a Bluetooth pregnancy test. And essentially what it is is it has it set up that it syncs to the app, the, the Pregnancy Pro test app, um, so that it, by the way, the name protest app just seems. Oh, like I know. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. Like pro hyphen test. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting because it, it comes with a free partner app that's available on Android, iOS and Amazon. And once it's synced, it, it says that the app walks users through how to use the test and actually, you know, take the test properly. And it also keeps them entertained <laughs> while they wait three minutes to get the results. Now they, they specify that the, those things aren't the problem portion of it. Um, it allows women to the, through the app to track their ovulation cycles and their pregnancy and helps to maintain a calendar with the baby appointments and everything like that. Um, however, since it's Bluetooth driven, the question becomes whether or not it's going to be hackable. And um, the, the concerns are with regard to the opt-in and how they share personal information with third parties and the third party marketing. So there's, there's a nice big question about, is it worth getting this app? Wheels is saying you pee on your phone. (laughs) (laughs) Not, not quite that much. Um, You know, I mean, if you, if you can't entertain yourself for the three minutes (laughs) to take, you know, to run itself, I really, I really think you need to walk away from your device for just a little bit. Also, there's other stuff on your device to keep you busy, like, you know, say Twitter, you know. Yeah. YouTube. Let's watch a video. Yik Yak. <laughs> Check out what's going on with Yik Yak. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but the, the idea that they're even thinking that this is a good idea to put in a pregnancy test, like. Well, you can see what they're doing. I mean, they are, you can see that, that what they're trying to do is, is this is, these are all ways for that company to oh, absolutely. form a bond with you so that you'll only use their pregnancy tests. And so that. You know, once you once you're pregnant and your your you know and your baby comes around, then all of the stuff that they have for baby now is now yours. You know, so I can see why they're doing it. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, but as someone in the market, this would be one of the pregnancy tests that I would not want to have, um, just because the potential for it, like the the information getting out there. Like you said, I don't want to have everybody stalking me for for products and whatnot. Um, and it seems it's it's interesting because they have a, a list of the app's permissions and like device and app history, identity, um, calendar, contacts, phone. Why did why does a pregnancy test need access to my phone? Like right. it, it read read phone status and identif- identity directly call phone numbers. Like why would I need to have a pregnancy test to have that permission on my phone? Like I doctor appointment or something i don't know i have no idea but it's just like are you listen kidding me? it turns out you're really 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 pregnant and we need to take care of this now <laughs> so we'll take care of this right now. congratulations you're pregnant let's call your mother oh. <laughs> you know, like, oh. oh this this just this was wow i i just auto milestone on the facebook page mm-hmm. 
Well, here it really does seem like way over, um, way overshoot though on these permissions, like you say, for the for all of these things. That's, and, and and I mean, I wonder then, is it is it at all granular so that I can have some of them on and some of them off? You know, so it it feels like they just they didn't think it through, like how people are going to feel about it, or maybe they did and they just didn't care, or they think that people aren't going to check. Well, I like the um, if the uh, if you opt in, you, we may share your personal information with third parties for third party marketing purposes. So essentially, you are now getting tailored ads for whether you're pregnant, whether you're not pregnant, um, the, the whole range of products and all of those. Um, you know, you have a friend that makes a mistake once that tells somebody or gives away their email address. Oh, yeah, I'm getting married. You know how much crap they get in their in email now that it's like, oh, yeah, here, did you think about having this for your wedding? And this, I mean, a baby. I mean, there's even more stuff that goes into that, even not having a baby. Oh, are you interested in um, in vitro fertilization? Are you interested in this? Like, I mean, there's so many. Do you need a counselor? Like, there's so many routes that this could oh, take. Oh, absolutely. But it's just, it's, I, I don't want an app telling me what I need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no more than other apps that already tell me what I need, but... But at least <laughs> not you. I don't give you that permission. <laughs> at least the absence. I, 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 you know, the thing is that a lot of this information is out in the world in different ways. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it all. I mean, it's all concentrated in my phone as well. So like Target could tell right away just based on the things that you're buying at Target that you're pregnant or mm -hmm. that you're not pregnant or that you're trying. So it can figure that kind of thing out on its own just based on what you bought. Um, so it's not like the information can't be acquired other ways, but it's just too easy with the phone is what I'm thinking. I want companies to work for it. Do your research and work for my business. Don't just expect me to hand it over. Big data. You hire that big data analyst. And yeah, make this I'm happen. not putting those people out of business. You realize every time you sign up for an app like this and give it all your permissions, somebody in big data loses the job. It's a sad, <laughs> sad world. Yes, which means that the people at the company are making more money because they're not having to pay those big data people. Yeah. Man. Screw that. People don't read the opt-ins. <laughs> All right, Kate, you put, you put some other stuff in there other than your uh, Tribeca story. Um, Starbucks. Starbucks. Tell us oh about my some gosh. Starbucks. Who does not want a unicorn drinking coffee? Uh, Starbucks now has their own emoji keyboard, which is fantastic because who doesn't need to send them their friends more um, coffee drinking oh, emojis? Yeah, it's, it's literally unicorn drinking coffee because I think I would use that every day of my life. Um, yes, I need a unicorn drinking coffee. So it's, it's essentially an, another emoji keyboard. Those are coming, I think, having a big swing right now because um, I have friends, I have, I have younger friends that I work with that are telling me about all these different keyboards that they have in their phone because they want personalized um, uh, images of them. You know, it's, the one has a, a dark haired girl kind of has some of her features that instead of just the normal, hey, yay, it's, it's, it's something more to it. But I do like, I like Starbucks emoji keyboard because like I said, we all like coffee. And it, it's, and I love the fact that Starbucks is reaching into something that in the tech world that's kind of a beyond, I mean, they're always kind of in there, you know what I mean? They're always doing something new and kind of pushing things, you know, about the, the ordering from your phone. You know, they had gift cards in their phone way before anybody oh, yeah. else had commonplace, you know, we could pay with our phones way before anybody else. So I, I really appreciate how Starbucks is always kind of looking to push the tech and figure out a new way to keep in. I could pay with my phone on Burger King. Mm-hmm. Like no. through their app. It, that surprises me. I wonder how many people actually do that. Here, I can tell you that for the Starbucks, like this just today, I ordered um, Starbucks, walked across the street, and there was a huge long line. And then there were a bunch of people waiting for their coffee. And as I literally, as I walked in the door, they called out, Cynthia. And they said, I am here. And I walked past every single one of those Ooh. people. I love that aspect. Yeah. I love that. I do that with no weight. I love going into a place that's totally packed and then I'm like, First oh, watch. it's Katie, yes. <laughs> and they're like, oh, your table's coming up right next. And then people are just like, I hope you die. We, we did this at Pan Panera so once. Star. We did this at one Panera once, but uh, I, I go to a Starbucks, see the line, go ahead and sit there and order and start start working and wait for them to call my name. Yep. Yeah. That'll I've, work perfectly too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done that a couple of times because you never know, like, the, it's like oh, I don't have time for this. Yeah, the, the Starbucks that's close to us that we usually, like, walk into – uh, it can either be super, super busy or super, super dead, you know, mm -hmm. so depending and there's not really a d specific time of day that this is. Mm -hmm. So I've gone in there in the afternoon and just walked right up and placed my order. I've gone in the same time on a different day and there's a line out the door. But yeah, it's, it's really nice and really super special. Now, here's here's my question, Katie, with the mm -hmm. with the Starbucks app or emoji keyboard. Can I order Starbucks with a text? Like no. I can Domino's. Not yet. Come they need, on. They need to work on that. 
there's not like an emoji for each size, an emoji for each product, because that would be there, very simple. They yeah, are there a are a few different. Yeah, because I'm looking at the picture here in the. Well, you can get the brown frap, the darker brown frap, <laughs> the, <laughs> the pink frap. Uh, <laughs> that'd be a fun flavor option. What do you like? I would like the yellow drink. <laughs> I see it in my emoji keyboard. What is this yellow drink? <laughs> yes. This dark brown one. I want that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a fan of the, the thought bubble with the Starbucks. Yes. I'm, so thinking, I'm thinking. These are just good Starbucks. hints for your coworkers. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Group text. Actually, I'm realizing right now that you're the people I should ask. I, I didn't, I don't know. I mean, I, I should know. But what is a flat white? Ooh. Delic Mike. They're delicious is what they are. Mike's, Mike's got this. <laughs> um. I, I I can't remember the entire configuration of what it is, but it's just really smooth. I got into it around like the the uh, whatever Christmas flat white that they had, mm. and that's basically my go to anymore. So, so what we're learning is that you are an early adopter, not just of technology, but of of caffeinated products. Mm -hmm. uh, this is true. This is true. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not at all surprised. Sorg is fueled by by caffeine. I'm even learning because uh, I saw I saw one of our restaurant friends like uh, talking on on Periscope by Americano. So I'm like, well, what is that? I, I'm trying that out. So I'm I'm otherworldly. I'm not just getting the black coffee as I usually do. Um, so you know, trying, trying. Not, not that I'm an aficionado, but sorry, I'm I'm Wikipediaing uh, what a flat white is for with latte art. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I need latte art. Ooh, can I go? It's, and... it's a coffee beverage that originated in New Zealand. It's prepared mm. by pouring microfoam, which is steamed milk consisting of small, fine bubbles with a glossy or velvety consistency, over a single shot or double ristretto shot of espresso. So it's like a it's it's basically a tiny bubble cappuccino. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of the difference between a prosecco and a champagne. Yes, that's what it sounds I'm like. I'm trusting you on that one. <laughs> yes, that that's. What it sounds like. Interesting. So now we know. Sorg. And we're better people for it. Yes. I, I think I think Sorg should go on a Starbucks run now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I need more coffee. It's gonna be like that is just fuel. Order it for you from here. <gasps> oh, Amazing. That's a real friend. You would get the unicorn <laughs> coffee emoji from me. <laughs> you deserve that. You know what? I can't do a show on Awesome Cast without talking about VR porn. <laughs> and especially with a ladies' takeover day, because you, yeah, know, you knew I was going to bring this up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Cynthia, if you've not watched the show recently, anything with VR porn, I find it fascinating. So <laughs> I had to bring an article over for us. I'm so glad I'm here. Yeah, see? I, <laughs> you didn't even know. See, maybe this is why you need VR. You didn't. So maybe I'm giving you a compelling reason <laughs> to get virtual reality. But it's interesting because they were talking about this was a wired conversation. This is an article. And then they had a, a there's a video. If you want to watch the video, it's not safe for work. But um, it's there's a video where they kind of do an interview with some of the, the people involved with VR porn. And um, it's interesting that the things that they picked out, like it has fewer cuts uh, because it makes it look realistic. And actual sex doesn't come with all sorts of viewpoints. All first person. Um a thing is, is um, the ladies and probably gentlemen in the videos um, have a hard time holding positions because you have to stand back from the camera. So it's a little bit more uncomfortable. And also because you can look at any parts of the body, you can, you, there's really, you can't hide. So it's, it's, they're feeling a new level of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest things in this was the fact um, that they use this setup with a seven camera, seven GoPro camera setup. Just kind of put together, and most of it's done in post production. <laughs> hmm. It's it's just kind of I don't think even Mashable got into it, and it, it's it's interesting. It's it's like wait a minute, you you know how Cosmo tells us every every week or every month that you know sex is changing. They're right. <laughs> I'll never admit that again. But everything is like it's all new. This is different. I don't. Know. And like I said, I like the GoPro rig. I think that's pretty cool. It's a yeah, very simple rig. The, the picture of the GoPro rig is, is pretty cool. Um, I, I'm appreciating the comment that uh, the performers take on, on filming VR porn, that it's a lot more physically challenging because the male performers can't really move. <laughs> so most of the performance is up to the, to the ladies. And uh, it can feel a bit awkward at times because he can't talk. So it's like I'm talking dirty to myself. Like these, these are the problems that people are finding with VR porn. 
<laughs> I have to talk to myself and my partner really doesn't do a whole lot. <laughs> this is boring. That, that sounds uh, very like um, sex. So there you go. <laughs> I haven't convinced her she needs virtual reality. I'll have to work harder next time. Next wow. time you're on the show, I have more VR articles. About <laughs> excellent. Excellent. The camera rig, that seems like anyone could do that, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's, this is very, I'm trying to figure out if it's something they purchased or kind of put together on their own. Yeah. Sorg is already like in the background, putting cameras together, trying to figure out how to make this work. Right. But it is, I can see why it would be, I mean, pretty complicated. And when you, and so I'm looking here at the, so this is VR and the women, so I haven't clicked this um, link. Um, it seems like, you know, the people there are actually, they're wearing green, almost like they could be on green screen. Is that what's happening then when, when they go and put it through post-production? So that you're like mapping in your boobs and all the Ooh, good things? I don't know. That is an interesting thought. No, I think that's the theme of the porn. Okay. <laughs> We need feedback from Thanks audience. for setting us straight there. Yeah. Yes, thank you, sir. It's just my guess. But that's interesting. Like, I never thought about using green screen and VR and porn. This is like, we're just expanding all the technologies oh. into one time. Oh, and that way, if you could just use one person wearing a, you know, some sort of green screen outfit, you could make them look however you wanted. Yeah. So you really only need one actor, right, Sorg? Sorg is shaking his head. No, no not entirely like, I can't how it would work, I don't think. <laughs> I think no. we're, 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 we're actually now recreating, I think, Second Life, if I'm not mistaken. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> VR Second Life. <gasps> Although there, there was some discussion about that at the uh, group last week. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, Control Alt VR, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of been curious about like what that all that's all about. Which apparently a bunch of people in a room watching a video on the wall. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully we'll talk a little bit about our VR group in the in the future. Well, this is uh, getting back to the not sexual porn <laughs> commentary. Um, I found an article that that I thought was really interesting. Um, City gives in to people who walk by embedding traffic lights in the sidewalk. Uh, this, I was, I was reading, it's in uh, Augsburg, Germany. Because people refuse to look up from their phones, they've put traffic signals in the sidewalks. And it's kind of an interesting concept because how many people are actually paying attention to the sidewalk, even though, if, I mean, if they're not looking up, obviously they're not looking up to see the traffic control devices. But... Um, I know that various places here in the States are having problems with pedestrian accidents because people just don't look and they didn't look before smartphones. And now it's just making it that much more worse. Um, it seems like what we would rather have would be for the phone to sense that you're approaching a corner and like to either shut itself off or put a great big stop or something yeah. right in your face. Yeah, you pretty much. It. Oh, that would be neat. But yeah, this, um, they're saying in, in this article that it came about because uh, a 15 year old was texting uh, walking across the street and, you know, a tragic accident. Um, but they found that the floor level traffic lights, if they place them near, you know, tram stops, they flash red when a tram is approaching. Um, but e even that there, there's the question of like, we have the, the T. It, would it recognize for the T passing through versus a, a vehicle? Um, mm. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of different aspects with it. And uh, here in Pittsburgh, we also get snow on the ground. Yeah. Ooh. And I would imagine that Augsburg, Germany, because, you know, Germany, um, I'm not entirely sure what the snowfall in Germany would be, but. Well, different parts, different. Yeah, different parts, different things. I, I, I get that part. But. Like, just, just the concept of this, I, I think, is interesting, especially since instead of setting forth pedestrian traffic laws or enforcing pedestrian traffic laws, they're trying to bend it to how the mass flow is going anyway. And there's small bees. Yes. Like, yes. The, the people that are walking, they're calling them small bees. <laughs> The social media zombies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm pulling this up so we can actually see what it says. Yeah, that's um, kind of amazing. 
Zombie they're, they're not called zombie textures for nothing. Um, in Germany, this is shortened to smombie. Yep. I like that phrase. Yes. <laughs> you are, are you going to have smombies in your, yeah, I want your zombie thing? I want smombies in my See, I, I, just, I think it's interesting that they're giving this a shot to see how it's going to work in comparison. Um, and th th specifies, you know, they're taking, pun intended, the road less traveled. Um, by doing it because most municipalities and government authorities institute pedestrian laws. You know, um, you if, if you are crossing and, and you are using social media or you're looking at your phone and not paying attention, you know, they find you, they cite you. Um, and they try to put it on the pedestrian, whereas they're trying to make it more adaptive, which I think is is interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of politics in this thing. I mean, just even the idea that the the car has the right of way over the person, that seems wrong, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, in real life, you know, and, and many people in the United States seem to be completely unaware that they that they need to yield to a pedestrian at a crosswalk and they'll just go blithely through. Um, uh, so, so, so the idea, though, that um, walking or bicycling is an alternative mode of transportation, as opposed to, you know, a much more, you know, a car is a much more recent form of transportation. So why, why aren't the older, more traditional, and you know, more, um, you know, healthful and beneficial uh, forms of transportation, you know, why are they like we have to, you know, we're going to penalize people for for using them? So right there, there's a the whole political thing. And then on the other hand, you know, I drive my car and. There are real jerks who walk around and just in the middle of the, yeah. of the way without using their – their phone is nowhere to blame because they are looking up and looking right at me and walking in front of me. You know, so screw you, mister. <laughs> um, so, also, so, there's, so nobody here is really necessarily always doing the right thing because um, that's how humans are. But the I, the I uh, – so I'm, I'm not excited at this, this idea of putting lights on the sidewalk because it seems like a short-term solution and a longer-term solution – just feels like, you know, let's have the pedestrians walk somewhere where the cars aren't or put the cars away or, you know what I mean? Route the cars around the situation rather than try to make us all, you know, be afraid of them. Yeah. And that's kind of when I, when I was reading it, that's what I thought as well is, you know, what, there's gotta be a better solution somewhere. And like you said, feet, the initial mode of transportation, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years ago uh feet <laughs> that <laughs> there were no automobiles there were no bicycles it was all feet um but yeah it's it's interesting like i, I work in mount lebanon and one of the I biggest just gonna say mount lebanon is like yep. you know ground zero for this yep one of the biggest things is you drive into mount lebanon right there next to the safety center they have one of those uh little light up sign things that's it's, specifically says and it doesn't flash it doesn't continue like it doesn't read a different message it stays steady and it says um crosswalk parking is enforced or crosswalk use is enforced by pedestrians you know, for pedestrians um lots of times i will see pedestrians just like you said cindy just cross willy-nilly in the middle of the street without crosswalk and right in front of a car and they don't care because they're trying to catch the train heading to downtown or heading to wherever at this point, because downtown stops up at uh, Potomac with, with the construction going on, but they just don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they don't look up. And if you do something as a vehicle driver, you know, shout at them or, or whatever, tell them, you know, Hey, you should have, you should look up. I almost just hit you. They look and say, that's not my fault. And then on the flip side of it, you know, uh, you know, I live in Oakland and work in Liberty and people just will not there. We have crosswalks over the place marked, you know, you have to let people. So the people who are legitimately doing the right thing and, and waiting at the crosswalk, the cars are just plowing through, oh, plowing yeah. through yeah. which is clearly wrong. Well, that's um, Dormont has a couple of different crosswalks and they're you know, like, there's one there next to the diner and four lanes of traffic coming through in the morning to in either direction. And I see this woman cross, trying to cross the crosswalk. I stop because that's what you're supposed to do. And the people behind me are blowing their horns. And the lady was like, I'm not stepping out there because these people are yahoos and they're not stopping. So thank you anyway. But mm -hmm. yeah, so, so again, it's, it's just kind of interesting that that's the mentality that people are taking with things. 
It's, it's, I almost, you know, feel like we ought to have to take, um, you know, a driver's test every couple of years. You know, when you renew your license, you actually have to renew your license and like prove that, you know, the laws that you learned back when you were 16, mm-hmm. 17. Years. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. The things I've probably forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know that any of us would pass our driver's test right now. The written portion of it, let alone the driving portion of it, actually. I'm looking at you, debtors. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't push people. No, you, you don't smush people. You're nice. I try not to smush people. I do get very I mean, angry. I I think that's a good rule to try not to smush, smush people. Smush people. I, I am one of those people that gets very, very upset whenever um, someone does walk out in front of you and they don't wave. Like, thank you for not killing me. Like, I feel like you should at least go, oh, thanks for not murdering me. <laughs> like, thank you for not running me down, even though you probably could. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what you, I'm thinking in my head. You are larger than me. All right. Well, I think it's uh, about time to wrap things up over here. Sorg is, is giving us the, the the little hand signal over there. Um, He's flicking us off. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, you guys have occupied way much of my show. Go away. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> thank you very much, Cindy, for coming on. And uh, Katie, thank you, Sorg, for, for your input and running for, for our texts. And it's been an interesting change of pace because mm-hmm. Sorg is actually doing our show notes and our tweeters for today. Um, instead of me, because we're, we're doing a ladies show. So Cynthia, where can we find you now? What are you up to now? I am a partner at Shift Collaborative, which is a creative agency in East Liberty, right by the Whole Foods. So they get a lot of my whole paycheck. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. not, you know, we're doing creative, interesting things. Um, and so I guess, do I have a plug? Um, uh, I, I want to plug a, a nonprofit that I'm part of called Social Venture Partners. We're doing some interesting new things with helping to connect people with nonprofits so that it's not just throwing money at problems, but trying to connect skills up with, with nonprofits. So if you're interested, look for socialventurepartners.org slash Pittsburgh, or just get a hold of me. I will point you in the right direction. Very cool. Very, very cool. You're always doing fun yeah. stuff. Aww. She's one of the cooler people we know. You know she, that, right? She is. <laughs> Oh like, gosh, you guys make me blush. <laughs> uh, we we could do more, but we'll 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 cut it back. Katie, uh, you can find me. Um, lately, I've been at the Scare House. We're doing Scare House Weekly, uh, kind of behind the scenes videos every Thursday. So look for those. We got the podcast back up. It'll be first uh, episode in a while tomorrow. Kind of redid some things there. And yeah, so um, if you're interested, in, you like Scare House on Facebook. You can follow us on the Scare House on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're all over the place now. And we can announce you are officially on the panel in a oh, couple yeah. weeks. Oh, yeah. I think I'm on a panel. Yes, you're on a panel. I'm on a, <laughs> some sort of podcasting panel. Yes, in a couple of weeks there will be a, uh, 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 an evening with PodCamp will return. Uh, it has Jim Cren, uh, Brian, uh, Brian Crawford from The River's Edge, uh, Buzzy from Epicast and Professor Buzzkill, and Dutters from the Scarehouse Podcast and the Awesome Yay. Cast will be joining us. Yep. So uh, it's going to be up our work hard. It's May 12th, I think it is. Check mm-hmm. out PodCamp Pittsburgh's uh, Facebook page, mm-hmm. events and everything for all the information. So Yeah, I've actually three podcasts in my – I've done three podcasts by the time the day ends today. Three different ones. Oh, so nice. I did Scare House earlier, and then it, we're Wrestling Mayhem Show Takeover in a mm-hmm. little bit here, too. Yep. Yeah, not bad for someone who can't stand the sound of her own voice. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Welcome to it. Yeah. Yes. And who are you, Missy? Hi, I'm Missy. Um, normally, I would plug Sorg stuff. I'm still going to plug Sorg stuff in some capacity, but I'm going to plug a different variety of Sorg stuff. We've been working on a little side project uh, called Sidekick Media. And Sorg will occasionally plug it on the show. Uh, we're trying to do some of the business stuff. So we're, we're doing video and social media and audio work for, for clients. And yeah, that's that's where you can find me. That and PodCamp. Mm-hmm. PodCamp will be making some awesome announcements in the next uh, next few weeks, next few days, actually. Wow. There, there will be a fun announcement coming out because unofficially, officially, officially, unofficially, we have dates and we will share them and it'll be amazing. It'll be awesome. And we also have our event at the, uh, at the library here in Beachview tomorrow night. Oh yeah. I'm teaching about podcasting. I mean, it's an introduction to podcasting. Please come out if you're in the area. Yes. Beachview Carnegie library in Beachview is the part where there's still tracks on the road. Can't miss it. Well, thanks to everyone. Uh, for for our awesome guests, audience. our awesome audience. Thank you for being awesome. And our awesome Sorg for, for being awesome. <laughs> we'll uh, keep them. 
This week, maybe. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you next week. So yes, next week. And next week, we'll be back to our, our usual cast of characters. So you'll have Sorg and Chilla, who unfortunately showed up in studio tonight, not realizing that the ladies were taking over. Poor Chilla. Sorry, man. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, so check in and catch us on the river's edge on Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. After Funny Money. Yeah, after Funny Money, yes. Thursdays at 8 a.m. Thank you. Tell them you've been our awesome audience. You have an awesome day, and I don't remember the rest. And an awesome week. Have an awesome week. Not just an awesome day, have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.